Spirit, the bill is set down for third reading next sitting day. Call on Government Order of the Day number two. Social Housing Reform, Housing Restructuring and Tenancy Matters Amendment Bill, second reading. Mr Speaker. Uh, the Honourable Dr Nick Smith. Mr Speaker, I move that the Social Housing Reform, Housing Restructuring and Tenancy Matters Amendment Bill be now read a second time. Mr Speaker, I am proud to commend this bill to the House. This Government stands for better and smarter public services. If we are to balance the budget and live within our means, but at the same time deliver better social outcomes, we need innovative approaches to issues like social housing. This bill is based on best international practice. The UK and Australia are well down the path of a more diverse approach to social housing. But it's also based on careful, solid policy making for New Zealand. And I again want to acknowledge the authors of the Vision for Social Housing report, who are very much the architects for the changes in this bill. It moves us from a frame of thinking around state housing to one of social housing, where we encourage, where we fund and where we grow a wide range of social housing providers. It enables a wider range of tenants to have access to income-related rents. It helps ensure that our social housing is focused on those people in New Zealand that have the greatest need. The bill sets up the regulatory framework to both grow and to manage the more diverse social housing sector. It enables the transfer of housing assessment from the Housing Corporation of New Zealand to the Ministry of Social Development, recognising that for families, housing is just one of the needs and the merits of a more integrated approach. Mr Speaker, I want to acknowledge uh, the hard work of the Select Committee and the changes that have been made by them. I particularly want to acknowledge and thank uh, the Chair of the Committee, uh, Sam Lutalinga, and note the sad passing uh, of his father this week. Uh, his and the Committee's thoughtful and meticulous work on this bill lays a great foundation for the growth of the New Zealand social housing sector. I also want to acknowledge the hard work of the Housing Corp, the Ministry of Social Development, the Ministry of Business Innovation and Employment in preparing this bill, and for their ongoing work with the Select Committee. I'd like to make a particular mention of the hard work of the Parliamentary Council Office in preparing the changes during the Select Committee stage. I want to thank and acknowledge the wide range of organisations that made very constructive submissions on this bill. Uh, they received 380 submissions. Uh, 43 of these were uh, quite unique and had substantive material with them, and 20 of those submissions are being presented orally. It's interesting to note, Mr Speaker, that the vast majority of those submissions were very supportive of the reforms in this bill. They are pleased to see the expansion of income-related rents to community housing providers and the transfer of that housing needs assessment function to the Ministry of Social Development. The feedback from submitters was insightful, uh, came from many of the players in the sector, has enabled us to not only improve the bill, but actually to help work on the regulations and getting uh, the officials lined up to make these reforms successful. A number of specific issues in the bill were raised by submitters, uh, and that has been responded to with changes. One of the first changes is a new provision has been inserted into the bill, allowing a ministerial directions on the timing and targeting of the review of ongoing eligibility for social housing. This will enable the Joint Ministers of Social Development and Housing to identify people to be excluded from the reviewable tenancies. 
in response to submitters' feedback about the proportionality of the intervention powers included in the bill, we've got a new tiered regulatory framework, very much modelled from what I saw operating very successfully in Australia with their regulatory system. This will mean that community housing providers, in receipt of only the income-related rent subsidy and not capital grants or stock transfers, will not be subject to all of those intervention powers. A number of amendments have also been made around those intervention powers, which now apply to only those community housing providers receiving those capital grants or stock transfers. <coughs> These changes are that ministerial's directions on use of intervention powers, where they will be mandatory. A regulator can now make only minority appointments to the governing board of a community housing provider. And an appeals body is to be established to give community housing providers the opportunity to appeal decisions that are made by the new regulator. Changes also mean that regulations can be made outlining the types of providers that may or may not receive that all-important income-related rent subsidy. This will give the government the flexibility required to respond to the changes in demand for social housing. Mr Speaker, for too long, government policy around housing has come down to a simplistic argument as to whether if there is more state houses, then that's about as much as the sophistication as the argument. The new model uh, works a lot better and will result in those families that are most in need getting access to the housing, making sure that our houses are properly maintained, something members opposite should hang their head in shame about the lack of investment and the poor quality of the State House estate that they left. And, Mr Speaker, the view has been backed by the Shareholders Advisory Group, which has provided the foundations for this reform. Mr Speaker, this bill focuses on proving the quality of social housing by creating a new social housing model that can better respond to the circumstances of families living in social housing, <coughs> requiring them to be provided with high quality, suitable housing. Mr Speaker, in the budget this year, the Government announced $2.9 billion of investment in Housing New Zealand to improve the quality of the Housing New Zealand stock. Mr Speaker, that is more than double what the previous Government in any three-year period invested in our own Housing New Zealand and puts to bed any accusation that this bill is about reducing the Government's role in providing housing. Alongside that has been the huge investments that's going on in Christchurch in repairing our housing stock, the project 2, 3, 4 and 5 that is realigning our own government's housing to better meet the needs of more diverse families, the tens of thousands of state houses that we have successfully insulated, and I remind the House of the government's commitment to make sure every house that can be insulated of Housing New Zealand will be insulated by the end of this year that by the end of next year, every house that is earthquake prone will be repaired by the end of next year. And by the end of 2015, every one of those 5,000 houses that was damaged in the earthquakes will be fixed, showing the level of the commitment of this government to improving the government's own housing stock. Mr Speaker, I commend this bill to the House. It is a well thought through reform. It has both good international context for the changes that we are making. It has been very well put together by the group involving a very diverse group of people involved in social services and particularly in social housing. This is a bill that, as I said at the beginning, makes huge improvements to the way in which the government delivers social housing, and I commend it to the House. The question is that the motion be agreed Mr. to. Speaker. Call Phil Twyford. Mr Speaker, um, first let me begin with some comments generally about the Minister's stewardship of the housing portfolio. Two words come to mind. Utter shambles. We've seen uh, in the last few weeks, in the last few days, sir, one after the other, uh, aspects of the Minister's portfolio that are in absolute disarray. And the most recent other the loan-to-value ratio um, spending limits, where it's 
blatantly clear to everybody that the government has mismanaged the portfolio and this issue. We've, they, they failed to take into account the impact on first home buyers. They failed to consider that it would depress new builds and the imperative of increasing supply. And they failed to properly consider the implications for